Um, this is going to be um, a tactile and listening session, activity. Um, there will also be um, a recording activity. We're going to make some, a couple of wax cylinder recordings all together. So first of all, I've got this very ancient, uh, well, I mean, it's, this is basically from the late 19th century, but it's actually a, an ancient form, ancient scientific instrument from, I suppose, I think it originated in ancient Greece, sort of 500 years BC, the monochord. It's, it's, a, it's a string stretched over a, over a hollow resonator, and uh, this has got a fixed string. Sometimes it had a string, basically, which was on a weight, so you could, you could vary the tension or, 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 and use different strings. And um, what it does, what you can do, it's got a bridge in the middle, and, and, and this bridge here is used to divide the string into two uh, parts, two portions. And uh, using the bridge, you can slide it along, you can actually change, you know, you can uh, change the ratio. And through this ratio, you can actually um, make different pitches and intervals. And so it was really using this instrument, I think it was Pythagoras was supposed to have uh, come up with the idea of, of relating ratio, string lengths and ratios to musical intervals. So, um, so it's very, very important in, the, in, the, in, in, Western, in Western music. And then I've got a collection of tuning forks here. And tuning forks are really interesting. Um, I mean, not just used for tuning instruments, uh, but they were used in a lot of scientific research. They're still used in scientific research uh, in all sorts of fields. Uh, in, the, in the 19th century, for instance, they were very important in the use of, in the standardization of musical pitch uh, um, uh, and in, in the tuning of uh, uh, instruments and uh, organs and keyboard instruments um, and so uh, because I mean really in the uh, in before even the 1930s if you went to Vienna or you went to Paris or you went to Berlin or London the the concert pitch the A that we call uh, was always different so singers had a terrible problem sometimes it was very high sometimes it was very low and so there was a kind of an international conference sometimes in, in, in the 1930s and they standardized it but each country had their own uh, pitch, really. So uh, um, and then also um, it was used by acousticians to investigate different kinds of oral phenomena. There's uh, one. Uh, it's it's uh, uh, around uh, difference tones. So if you have two pitches uh, that are relatively close in ra in in, uh, in range in in range, the, you you get a beating effect. But this is the whole point of this: is it's actually getting very close and listening to these objects rather than listening to recordings of, of, of historical artifacts. This is a, a way of, of, of getting quite close and seeing. Uh, and I think it changes your perception to these scientific instruments. So I thought what we could do, um, I'd like to make two recordings because there's quite a few of them. So but we can form a line, a cue, and then each each person stands in front of the horn and says a says something. Make the, you can make a sound, or you can say who you are. You can or or you can maybe play a tuning fork, although that won't sound very loud. But uh, uh, yeah, so I think either make a sound. Uh, uh, you can read a very, very short piece of text if you like, or you can sing something, or you can just say, uh, greet the phonograph, or you can just say who you are and, you, and where you're from. That's basically all, really. And then we'll form a line which is one after the other, and it has to be fairly loud. I mean, this is a completely acoustic form of recording, so it's just the pure energy of your voice or instrument, whatever you're playing, that's going to actually vibrate. Uh, a glass diaphragm, flat, 
a small glass diaphragm which is about three, um, three centimetres in diameter. And, and, and there's a, a, a sapphire cutting stylus that's glued onto it and that vibrates. And so your, your voice is basically going to, be, uh, going to set the, the glass into vibration backwards and forwards, and that etches a spiral, there's a, a, a spiral groove is created onto the, onto the uh, spinning wax cylinder, and, and your voice is going to be rendered into physical form through sort of a micro, uh, microscopic uh, bumps in the spiral groove. And then we'll play that back using a sort of a rounded stylus, which basically reads, reads that, uh, that groove. Peekaboo! <laughs> <laughs> Greetings, strange device. This is quite fun. Oh god, it's Friday, I've got to go! Shall I compare thee to a summer's day? Hello, is anyone there? MP3 is dead. <laughs> <laughs> okay, what we'll do now is play that back with a horn, and then I'd like to play it back through listening tubes. But first of all, we'll, we'll hear it back through the horn. We hear the horn, here it goes. What I find fascinating about these, making these, uh, recordings and this, this recording process is that it actually it gives it's more um, the result is more of an impression of the sound rather than a, you know a, a real representation of it and I think that that's uh, really interesting um, in terms of when you're listening to it also when you're listening back uh, and when we'll, in a moment you'll be able to listen through these uh, uh, listening tubes which are actually very related to the stethoscope incidentally um, uh, you, you have to listen through a kind of a patina of noise uh, in, and uh, you can actually say that actually the history of, 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 the history of sound recording is, is like a sort of this battle between signal and noise, Get, you know, actually getting the signal stronger than the noise. And I, so you're always fighting against this, this, this resi residual noise that you have from, from, the, from the media. And there's this very nice, but I was kind of like listening to these kinds of recordings with all of this surface noises, it's very similar to some kind of, uh, a, to a, a memory of something. And there's this very beautiful essay of uh, Walter Benjamin called uh, Excavation of Memory. And he talks about memory uh, being a media, a medium. Uh, uh, and much like uh, the earth is a medium when you're digging around the earth in order to get to a, a pots or, or different artifacts or buried treasure. Um, and in a way, when I'm listening back through these recordings, it's basically like listening through uh, the past, through this kind of, the noise of the, the, me the media of, of, of the wax cylinder. In a way, it's a way of aging sound for me. And so when I use it, I use it really as a means to, to sort of uh, age sound, to look, uh, to record, record the now through the technology of the past. <laughs> 